luck would have it, we're down here filming on the Cabaret Strip, and guess who we bumped into that we thought we'd grab for an interview? We got Phil Trainer with us. Hi, Phil. Oh, yeah. You've just come from uh, one of his gigs, just rushed from one of your venues, haven't you? Where have you just come from? I've just been up at the, uh, the judges' chambers, up in uh, Via Park to and play Flamenco. Yeah, in the blazing sun. Exactly, three hours, uh, getting cooked. <laughs> do you actually do it outside then? Or? Outside, yeah, all, all year round actually. The only thing that makes me go inside would be if it's too windy or if it's raining. Yeah. So all year round, this is my fifth year uh, doing that one. So um, how did it all start for you? What, what made you get into this business? Um, I was playing guitar really as a, as a hobby more than anything and uh, I was looking at a change in career and ended up out here. I uh, just thought I would give it a shot and uh, it's been quite successful. I'm in my, uh, my fifth year now so, uh, and I've been extremely busy. So you started obviously started without putting too fine a point on it quite late in life then? Uh, I think it was probably close to 30 when I really started playing the, the guitar. I wanted to when I was young. Actually, um, it's the piano that I wanted to play. Yeah. <laughs> and me, uh, my mother couldn't afford the lessons and uh, I shimped and shimped about it. So uh, I think it was about 11 or 12. So she sent my uncle down to, to give me some words of wisdom. And that was basically his words were, uh, well, you know, you should learn the guitar because when you're older, you'll realize that you've never seen anyone walking into the pub with a piano under their arm. No. So. <laughs> I always say to my audience sometimes, I'm so unlucky, if I was in a marching band, I would have the piano. <laughs> that's bad luck. So, uh, so obviously that's why you chose the guitar, but you do play other instruments. I've, I'm, I'm sure I've seen you playing. I do, yeah, yeah. So um, what else do you play? Uh, I, I play the whistles, because uh, uh, obviously I do a lot of Irish music, so I play that in the boron, which is the, um, the Irish drum. Bit of banjo, bit of mandolin, and uh, well, I heavily use, heavily use um, harmonica at my gigs as well. Do you regard yourself as, a, as an Irish Music, Irish entertainer, or uh, I would. L that's the way I would like to go. However, over here you've really got to play to the audience in pubs, and it would be, I would be very, very audience-driven. I would say, you know, I, I say I normally don't end up beating my words anyway, but I always like to say, if you have any requests, let me know, and I yeah. find out it'll play. It. So you also represent your country uh, sometimes out here, don't you? There's a big, a big festival, or there, there is in Toraviaca. They have the uh, European Day where the mayor comes out and they raise the European uh, flag. It's a, a commemoration of, as well as uh, of uh, Toraviaca becoming a town. So I've been asked, uh, I don't know how many nationalities there are in the local area, but there, there, there's quite a few. So I've been asked for the last couple of years to get up and represent Ireland and get up and do some uh, some Irish music. Yeah. So uh, do you do proper traditional Irish music when you do that? That's, then, that's proper traditional Irish music. Yeah. Is that what you do in your show normally? Um, I would mix it up. I mean, I can do anything from 50s, 60s up to modern day stuff, but I always like to throw the, the Irish stuff in. Is that where your heart is? Is that where you prefer yourself? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, any, any kind of folk music, really, but predominantly Irish music uh, that I like. You do a lot of original stuff as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I like writing my own stuff. Uh, that would be uh, kind of more on, on social issues and, and stuff like that. Uh, I've got a CD of completely self written stuff. Oh, yeah? Uh, at the minute, that's called Plain and Simple. That was the first CD that I made. Yeah, I, I heard um, I heard you sing a song at the Pride of Spain Awards last year called Gypsy Lane. Yeah. And I listened to the words and I just thought it was one of the most stunning pieces of work I've ever heard. Is, is it is it a big is it important <coughs> to you? Is it a big? Uh, very very much so because uh, when I came over here, I don't know if I led a sheltered life or not, but I was quite surprised really to see how many girls there were in the roundabouts and the uh, the ages of them uh, yeah. shocked me and. Uh, I was watching a, a television programme and they went in Tora Viaca got a mention on it about the, uh, the amount of human trafficking and, and prostitution here. So it kind of uh, uh, grabbed me and uh, I thought, well, what on earth would make any woman um, kind of stand on a roundabout and go through the abuse that they go through? So, and uh, have you ever heard the song then? That's, yeah. that's exactly my thoughts on it. What, what sort of stuff have you done recently? You've done, you done some pretty gig, big gigs or I know you, you're, you're on the bill at the beach party, aren't you? I am, yes. I've got the Beats Party coming up and then I've got my own show in the theatre in the Virgin Del Carmen. Right. Uh, I just thought, getting away from the pub uh, scene, you know, I thought I would like to do some music with a, a little bit of a, a little bit more depth. So I booked the theatre for a, a charity, which is the uh, uh, Inspirante Vida, yeah. which is the, uh, the, the drugs rehabilitation programme over here. Right. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing it, that's the, the charity that I've chosen. So and the social issues out here are really, really close to your heart, aren't they? they? They are anyway, they are, yeah. I mean, growing up in Belfast, you know, it's, it's something that uh, I always think about, you know. Yeah. So Even the comedy that I like to say would be very, um, you know, things that you see every day, things I like, people like Billy Connolly and that, you know, observational yeah. kind of stuff. 
So whether it's comedy or, or music, I, I like that kind of music. Yeah. So uh, tell me about autographs and women and uh, the other side of the business, the, the fun side, apart from the social issues. Uh, do you, you get lots of, you know, being in show business, you get chatted up a lot, lots of women throwing their knickers at you or... <laughs> <laughs> or their thongs, or I think I'm getting a bit long in the tooth. I think I used to, I used to get I used to get knickers thrown at me. But being a folk singer, the kind of people that, that, that would come to my gigs, it takes them a while to land, you know, because they're a little bit bigger. Although I must say, I got a I got an eye patch thrown at me the other night, and a, a you got an eye patch yeah. thrown at you. Well, that's what I thought it was, and then someone told me it was a thong. Oh. <laughs> I suppose as you get a bit old, when you're a bit younger, do you get all the thongs, and then you know the. the Pants get bigger as you get older, do they? Yeah, I don't know. I might start giving away free pairs with my CDs, so I sell <laughs> CDs and get them thrown at me as well. Yeah. Get asked for your autograph a lot? Uh, I do, and I get quite embarrassed about it. The, the first CD they made, Plain and Simple, I, I got asked the autograph a lot and uh, say I get very embarrassed. So the second CD that I made, FBI, is a pure black cover, so as, uh, so as I can't autograph it. And oh, purposely, right. <laughs> that, that, that's why I've done it, because I, I don't like doing things like that. No. However, I went to see um, I went to see Smokey a couple of months ago, and uh, myself and, and Julie McCracken over here decided to go backstage to get a few photographs taken with the band. And, uh, they were one of my favourite bands in the uh, in the seventies. So the only original member there is uh, is, is the bass player, and uh, we're getting our photographs taken. And I'm still chatting away to the bass player, and uh, a woman came up and asked me for my autograph. Yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I could see Julie McCracken getting redder, and I looked at the bass player, and she says, "Go on." So she handed me the pen and turned around and assigned the back of her jacket. Yeah. <laughs> so she asked me after when she looked at the ticket and says, "Which one of you?" I says, "Well, it's not me. It's actually him." You should be asking. <laughs> Was he a bit miffed? <laughs> he actually took it very well. I think. Oh, that's good. Good. What, what's in this store for you? Where do you see yourself in a, a year's time or a couple years' time? What What do you want to do? Well, I'm trying to uh, break away from the pub scene at the minute. Uh, I mean, it's my bread and butter, and I think most musicians that start that start off in pubs, and it's been very, very good to me over the last uh, nearly five years. But um, I want to I want to uh, get into the folk music scene, so I plan in the winter to start uh, playing in the folk clubs uh, around England, starting off, and then yeah. using that as a, a springboard. Hopefully, next summer on to on to some of the festivals. Yeah. Why England? Why 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 have you chosen England rather than uh, Ireland? Or? Well, there's a huge folk sing, folk uh, scene. scene. Yeah. In, uh, in England at the minute, uh, so I thought I would go there, and you know that that's where it seems to be happening. Ireland, I would like to say there's probably a little bit too much competition in Ireland just to right, be starting okay. off there. You know, very talented country. Yeah, it's very musically wise. <laughs> yeah, very very talented, and it's a smaller place. And I suppose, yeah, I understand. Yeah, not fancy America, not fancy. If you're going to go bigger country, well, go the whole hog. I, I think uh, the Irish music certainly would go down well in, in, uh, oh, in America. It. I mean, everybody in America is Irish, aren't they, yeah. really? I, was, I had an offer a couple of weeks, well, not an offer as such, but uh, I was chatting to a guy that, that does the same kind of thing as I do. He plays in pubs, and, uh, you know, he said it's, it's, it's very, very good money. And uh, he, he offered me, give me his business card and all that, and uh, offered me a place to stay if, uh, if I should want to go yeah. over. Excellent. I'll maybe take him up on that. Yeah. So, um, a couple of questions just before we wind down. Um, what does Phil Trainer do to wind down? If it's, if it's not re work related, what what do you like to do that's just like complete chill time? Probably listen to the music. Yeah. <laughs> At the minute, I've got two young kids, and uh, I wouldn't say that winds me down. I mean, they're they're seven and eight. Uh, <laughs> say hello till the night, Connor and Rand. Hello. So uh, no, they they pretty much keep me on my toes, and yeah. when I'm not working as as much as possible, I like to I like to spend time with them. Yeah. And you do you do that to to wind down? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're good. I mean, I must admit they're yeah. they're, they're good fun. Very yeah, good fun. I met them the other day in the supermarket. Carrefour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very well behaved. You yeah. must have caught them on a good day. Oh, really? Okay. No, <laughs> um, no I must admit they're, they're they're good fun, but typical boys. Yeah. Thank you very very much indeed, Phil Trainer. The Russian and her teenage years of beauty in her day was brought to spin to clear the debts her family couldn't pay. But now she turns her face away and gets into a car. One takes the looks beautiful, the other birds a scar. And no one hears her cry moan, and no one sees her tears. From top of tails to roundabouts, her trails been black for years. So look away and sling abuse as she stands in the rain. There's more to her than meets the eye, the girl on Gypsy Lane.